Welcome to Seven Pot Club. I'm Rob. I grow hot peppers. I'm pleased to be out here in the garden on a beautiful July afternoon. Most of our hot pepper plants are looking healthy and happy. Those are not words I would have uttered just a few weeks ago. In this episode, I'm going to cover some of the challenges we faced during the first weeks of this year's hot pepper growing season. An unexpected temperature drop right after planting, an infestation of aphids and how we controlled them with ladybugs, and our yearly battle with four-lined bugs. After that, I'll show you two new ways I'm using Fishner to feed my plants this season. Finally, we'll take a brief garden tour. I could have parceled this out into separate videos, but I know you're anxious for updates, so I'm going to present it all in one action-packed plant extravaganza. Let's get started. Rewind to Saturday, May the 30th. The outdoor beds had been planted on Friday. During the day on Saturday, we sold a few plants at our annual neighborhood plant sale. But the overall vibe was not chill, and a nightly curfew had just been imposed. So yes, I was a little distracted, and yes, I neglected to consult the weather report. If I had, I would have known temps were going to plummet into the 40s. My plants were already acclimated to direct sun, but they weren't prepared for such a chill. If I had been thinking clearly, I could have covered the plants with inverted pots. I could have brought my unplanted seedlings onto the back porch where it was warmer, but I did neither of those things. The following morning, it was crisp, clear, and bright. Our neighborhood was quiet and calm. But the plants looked horrible. I shouldn't be so hard on myself, but I didn't protect my babies. For days, I couldn't even bring myself to photograph the plants close up. I didn't want any visual evidence of how much I suck as a gardener. If I had just waited a few more days before planting, all this anxiety could have been avoided. I did film this daddle plant for a few seconds. It looks terrible. I thought it wasn't going to make it, so I moved it to a pot and swapped in a different plant. Remind me later in the episode, and I'll show you how it looks today. As the days went by, things didn't look quite as terrible, but many of the plants were definitely not ready for a close-up. I felt like the world's worst gardener, and the last thing I wanted to do was share my self-inflicted disaster online. But I learned a valuable lesson. Don't plant in Minnesota until the overnight temps stay in the mid-50s or warmer. And then a new threat appeared. Most years, I reuse some of the potting soil from the previous year. I fill about a third to a half of each pot with old soil before I add in the fresh potting mix. I had a bunch of pots lined up in the driveway, ready to dump as needed. I was busily potting on a Saturday morning when I needed to refill my wheelbarrow from this stash. As I went to grab a pot, I saw something moving on its surface. A closer look revealed an unwelcome sight. Most of the pots had aphids crawling all over them, and soon all over me. Super creepy. This invasion must have happened overnight, because the previous day, I had noticed nothing. Of course, this immediately changed my plans. Instead of reusing this soil, I wanted to get it out of these pots and away from my plants. I placed a couple of tarps on the driveway and started dumping out the pots. I must have emptied at least a hundred of them before I was done. My original thought was to hire a dumping service to haul away the dirt, but I quickly rethought that after I got some estimates. I had to do something soon because I couldn't get the car out of the driveway until I cleared them away. So the next morning, I broke up the clumps and found a few places around our property far away from pepper plants where I could dump the dirt. 
For the next several days, I continued to find aphids all around the yard and had to inspect the pots carefully before reuse. Here's one sitting on the camera while we were filming. We have a wide variety of plants around our yard that are more attractive to aphids than peppers, but better safe than sorry. That's why I ordered 3,000 ladybugs from Bazos, a seller on Amazon. Ladybugs love to eat aphids, so they're a great choice for natural control. They arrived in just a few days, apparently unharmed by their cross-country trip in a cardboard box. You can store them in the refrigerator until you're ready to deploy them. The best time to release is at dusk. I watered the release site, making sure there was some standing water so they could have a nice drink. I had already taken them out of the fridge so they would be awake and alert. Now it's time to set them free to find a meal. We only released about a third of them on this first night. Some people say that releasing ladybugs is useless because they just fly away. But the hope is that they'll hang around long enough to eat all your pests before they move on to the next yard in search of more. The next day, a lot of them were still hanging around, so they must have found something tasty. Over the next two nights, we released the rest. Here's one inspecting milkweed, the aphid's favorite plant in our garden. We haven't seen an aphid in weeks, so I'd say this experiment was a big success. Now, on to another destructive garden pest, the four-lined bug. In recent years, it's been an annual visitor, chewing lots of holes in leaves all over the garden. There isn't a good chemical-free way to control them, and because they are hard-bodied, ladybugs won't eat them. Our only strategy is to just kill as many of them as we can find. Thankfully, pepper leaves are not their favorite, so the most chewed-up capsicum plants are the ones in closest proximity to their preferred victims. This Hawaiian has only superficial damage, while this shishito is really chewed up. Still, no pepper plants died from this infestation, and we've just learned to wait them out until their life cycle ends in early July. A while back, we dedicated an entire episode to this annoying leaf muncher, and if you want to learn more, there's a link at the end of this video. Enough about pests. Let's talk fertilization. My favorite fertilizer is Fishner Organic Fish Manure Compost. It's been worked into our ground beds, and it's also in every pot that holds a pepper plant. I used Fishner for the first time last year with great results. I tested it against the chemical fertilizers I used to use and actually got a better yield with Fishner. But I felt the potted plants looked prematurely tired in the final weeks of the season. So this year, I held back some of the Fishner so that I could add a little extra to the pots mid-season. I started with this Shishito, one of the plants most chewed up by four-line bugs. For this 12-inch pot, I'm adding about a cup. Then I work it into the top layer of soil. Then I repeat it 170 times for all the other pots. That was last week. This week, I started the second phase of this mid-season bump by doing a foliar feeding of Fishner liquid, recommended to me by Fishner founder Jim White. To apply this liquid, I needed a pressure sprayer. If you browse Amazon, there are so many choices. This Taber 5 liter model had good reviews and a reasonable price, so I went with it. I waited for an overnight weather report free from rain so the liquid wouldn't be immediately washed off the plants. First, I gave the garden a needed watering. This was the first time I had watered in days because we've had frequent rain for the last couple of weeks. Then I gave the Fishner liquid a good shake, measured out a quart, mixed in a teaspoon of the supplied activator, and poured it into the sprayer. I pumped up the pressure and started spraying. The instructions on the bottle recommend diluting the liquid, but Jim recommended I try applying it full strength. Later, I realized he thought I was using a hose end sprayer. I soon discovered that I wouldn't have enough to cover the whole garden unless I did dilute it, so I mixed the rest of the bottle with about three quarts of water and another teaspoon of activator. Then I had no trouble covering the entire garden. It could have been my imagination, but the garden looked especially perky the following morning. I'm going to repeat this treatment every week for the next two or three weeks. Here's the damaged daddle plant I showed you earlier after it got cold shot. The damaged leaves remain, but above is new healthy growth and peppers. One is turning ripe. 
It's certainly not the best looking or largest pepper plant I've ever grown, but it's a pretty remarkable comeback from a near death experience. Before I go, let's take a quick look at a few plants around the garden. We're already getting some ripe peppers here and there, although we're still weeks away from the main harvest. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and tap the bell to receive a notification each time we post a new video. Check out all our 7-Pot Club and Hot Pepper related merch at 7pot.club slash merch. And for even more 7-Pot Club, follow our daily exploits on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. For 7-Pot Club, I'm Rob.